Wanuskewan is a short drive north of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and is a great place to discover some of the indigenous culture of the area. In addition to rotating art exhibits, they have a hall featuring the indigenous groups, and you can see a variety of dance outfits and regalia, with explanations for design meanings and items showing how everyday life was lived. For example, on the left is a toy cradle board, which would have been used by a young girl, and on the right is a jingle dress themed around strawberries. Each dress is unique and handmade, so no two are alike. Here's a full-size cradle board. The name, Wanuskewin, translates to seeking peace of mind in Plains Cree. These are pieces of bison bones and teeth that were found on the site here. I was especially excited to see this rock. This stone has petroglyph markings on it and was uncovered by the bison that had been introduced to the area. If you notice, there are lines across the surface of the rock, and these depict the ribs of the bison. The rocks have special meaning and would have been used in ceremonies. Of course, they have a full-size stuffed bison that you can look at up close. This map was fascinating and shows the trade routes of various items across the prairies. Rare items, like shells, would have come from the west coast and even the Gulf of Mexico and made their way inland and were thus highly prized. Obsidian also made its way from the west. It shows that people in the day traveled far and were not simply statically living in one place. This is a meeting space. The panoramic windows gave an impressive view of the valley. The round shape is important in gatherings. By being in a circle, everyone is equal and all can be seen and heard. These are vamps, the front section of moccasins, and this was a display in memory of the children who were found buried at residential schools across the country. We headed outside. The front walkway had an impressive display of figures depicting the final moments of a buffalo hunt. Everyone able would have participated in this. I believe this is a nod to the petroglyphs that were found on the rock. A wall of grass sculptures line the front. We headed outwards to see if we could spot the bison. We arrived late in the day, so keep in mind that the restaurant and gift shop close a bit earlier than the rest of the site. Some common flats danced in the wind. The end of the trail has a small viewing area with a fire pit. We found out that this field poses the mothers with the calves. There might be one off that way, right on the distance. I'm not sure if I've got my finger in the right spot. And we'll pull out the other camera and see what we can see. There are some there, for sure. While the other enclosure has the bulls and non-pregnant cows. I zoomed in for a look at a bull standing on top of a small hill. It was quite the contrast, seeing part of Saskatoon's industrial area in the distance.
Tours are available for free. We had gone on our own. However, we overheard the tour guide explain how the bison are vaccinated regularly to protect them from disease. The buildings in behind are used to assist in caring for the bison and supplement their diet when necessary, such as during the winter time. The drive line. Yeah, I guess I can see it. Yeah. And then right over the uh, yeah, and right the center. The, the center there would be supposed to be the probably behind the valley there too. As we walk back, Lyndon pointed out the small cairns on either side of the path, which form a drive lane. This would have been used to herd the bison towards the jump, which is located on the other side of the visitor center. It was an impressive visual and gave a feeling of the scale that operating a buffalo hunt like this would have required. We walked back past the statues and they suddenly fit in better as part of the overall landscape. We also had a garden showing some of the native wildflowers. In the distance, we could see an area where various gatherings could be held. We continued towards the valley. There are a number of trails that you can use to explore the area. Unfortunately, we were limited on time and headed towards the base of the jump. I was torn as I also wanted to see the teepee rings and medicine wheel. I would like to mention that Wanuskewan is well on its way to obtaining a UNESCO World Heritage Site status. They project that the long process will be complete by 2025. This is the bison processing site. As we walked, we saw a sign warning of possible falling trees due to beaver activity. Yeah, no kidding, they're active. This is the beaver processing site. The land held on to its history for a long time. It would have been tragic to lose such a significant place like this. It was wonderful to learn about and visit Wanuskewin, and left me with a quiet happiness that this site exists. As always, thanks for watching.